Hello everyone, today I'm really excited. We are gonna be looking at playback. This works off of multitracks. So if you're not familiar, I would suggest you go and visit multitracks.com. Playback is a really awesome app. I just started having my band directors, my vocal leaders use playback. Uh, I'm used to using Ableton. I really enjoy creating sets on Ableton and all the versatility that it offers. However, playback is very, very similar. Playback is very powerful. It allows you to get everything and have it at your fingertips. Uh, I get a lot of questions on how does this work? And there's a lot of ways that you can get songs, download tracks from multitracks.com. I personally like purchasing the tracks and having them available whenever I need them. So those are things to think about as you're looking at multitracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the playback app and we are going to start. We are gonna be setting up a set as if we were gonna be doing worship. So you have all of your controls right on top. That next section right here, you have add a song, uh, which is going to show you all the songs that you have in the queue. Right underneath, you're actually gonna have the timeline. So you're actually gonna be able to see the WAV file in a sense. And right down here, you're gonna have everything available to bring up, to turn down, uh, to remove instruments, to keep those instruments up. Uh, you have your buses, your mute MIDI, repeat once and repeat forever, and then your master control. So we're gonna go ahead and begin. On the very top, these three lines here, you get your settings and your map MIDI. This is where it allows you to see the timeline, bigger or smaller. And when you hit edit, this is where it allows you to begin to change things uh, once you have songs there. The first thing we're gonna do is add a song. We tap on add a song. We're gonna go to my library. When I go to my library, these are the songs that are in my cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit songs. So the first song that I'm gonna add is going to be Rest Power. When you tap on it, it actually shows you what key do you wanna sing it in. So we usually do it in A. I'm gonna tap on A, tempo. You can change it once you add the song into the queue. The starting point literally allows you to skip any intros if you'd like. So I'm gonna leave it at zero, end point, the exact same thing. You get to end the song sooner than what it actually ends. It also gives you the ability to have a five second fade out. And when you tap on tracks, it's actually gonna show you every single track that it has. Now, from here, if you wanna save space on your iPad, you can delete whatever you don't want. I'm gonna keep everything in there for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and add. There's a green little bar there that is buffering, showing us how long it takes to download. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Let's pick another song. I'm gonna tap on new every morning. And again, key, we do it in D. Tracks, I want them all. Ooh, and this one has a lot of tracks. You go back and then you go ahead and tap add. So these are taking a little longer because of my internet. So I apologize. So now we're gonna go ahead and add, this is a move. We'll keep that in G, leave everything in there, tap add. We'll go ahead and do living hope. You do wanna make sure that you have an iPad that has 32 gigs or more. You will run out of RAM if you have less. All right, all the songs are downloaded. They are on the iPad. So as you tap on rest power, it is in the queue, it is ready to go. A really awesome part about playback is it separates each section of the song. So it gives you the sequence, it gives you the count, the intro, the chorus, and so forth. So you're actually able to go through the whole entire song and see exactly what is going on. So you can play from wherever you want. So if I want to do the outro, I double tap on outro. That's why it has an O. So let's go ahead and play the intro. If you want to repeat that part again, you just double, you could double tap it. You'll see that loop, intro. which is repeat. And it goes right into it again. The awesome part is the guide will actually guide you into intro again. So you can actually jump from intro. I could go to verse if I'd like, and it will do it in time. So let's go ahead and pause it. Let's go down to the very bottom. The very bottom is going to be your click. One, two. You have your three, accents. Two, three, four. You 
you also have your eighth, sixteenth, so it gives you a lot of versatility. You also have your guide. And then you have the rest of your instruments, your drums, loops, your bass, acoustic, you have your piano, your keys, one, you have your horns, And as I had mentioned, your background vocals. And that was your master volume. The really awesome part about playback is the fact that it gives you the reference song already there. So if I hit play, and I solo out reference, right now it's off completely. So it's not even giving me the ability to turn up or down. If I solo, that's actually the song already, the original song. So if I have any questions, the band has any questions, how does the original go? And that'll give you the soloist singing the song or the main person leading the song as well. Now over here, like I had mentioned, you have your buses. Now that we have the actual song in there, if I go ahead and tap on, I'm going to take you back to the very beginning and I go ahead and tap on buses. It's giving me the click and guide as a whole. Now I'm going to go ahead and start. One, two, and so click and guide is completely gone now. So it's all a bus, which means it's several channels together. This is all your drums, your percussions, your loops, your pianos, your bass. Many times bass also comes with synth bass, so you can remove all of them. Keys, electric guitars, because there's always going to be more than one. Acoustic guitar, you got your vocals, and your aux which I'm assuming those are probably going to be percussions, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to bring them all back up again. So if you don't want to go through the trouble of going through each individual track, you hit buses, and it'll take you here. If you hit buses again, it'll take you back to everything. Chorus. Now, as we go to play the chorus, and I want to repeat the chorus, I have the ability to hit that button and it will repeat again but it will only repeat once once it repeats that one time it will go away so it means it's gonna continue to the chorus now however if I tap on the eternity it's going to keep repeating forever it's not gonna stop until I come and tap it again and it goes away as I had mentioned the songs have the sections split up for you already this makes it very easy if you want to add chorus twice right here in the beginning the original song only does it once but if you want to repeat it twice you go ahead and hit edit you come down and there's a plus sign on the timeline let me go ahead and tap on plus it will give me each section so this chorus is going to be somewhat different from the very very last one because it's not going to be very built so exactly how the song is played on the original track is the way you're going to hear it. Remember we talked about the start points and end points? This is where you see them. As I come back to the very beginning and I hit play, One, two, I see my time intro, start. Two, three, if I want to start at 10 seconds, I don't know why I would want to do that on this song, but I'm just trying to show you. I want to start at 10 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the three dots there on res power. I go ahead and hit start point and I'm going to hit 10 seconds and hit update. 
Once I do that, automatically, when I start the song, it's going to start me at 10 seconds. Chorus. End point works the exact same way. Now I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to tap on the three dots again to edit the song as a whole. Tempo. Now that the song is downloaded, I can actually hit tempo and I can make it go faster or slower. It will begin to update or change the song. Now completed the update. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you once you start the song. Oops, sorry. Oh, because we have that start point at 10. Now it's a lot faster. Now, I don't know why you would want it that fast. It's already a fast song. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my start point at zero again. Another thing to look at through a song is the transitions. These little circles here is where you go to change transitions when you tap on it. Right now we have no transition. So when we get to the end of rest power, it's going to stop there. So end. And it stops. This transition here, you have the ability to auto link, which means it will go to the very end of the song and then it will start the next song immediately. Overlap means that res power is ending, the next song will begin. Crossfade means the volume of res power will begin to decrease as the next song begins to increase. I personally like overlap because I don't like the transitions to be quiet or become less. I always have the band and vocals be huge and exciting at the very end of a song as we transition to the next so that it doesn't feel like we stop Everybody gets quiet and then we start the next song, especially in fast songs. So I'm going to go ahead and hit overlap just so you can see. Double tap on E for end. One, two, two, three, four. And it went ahead and started. Now, this did have a little bit of a dead time there. And that's because the way rest power ends. Rest power ends with hits and it stops. So if I want to go ahead and do new every morning with the transition, the end is VP stands for vamp. This is a perfect example of a good transition. It's huge. It's big. You want to go to the next song. The transition, there is none. So what we want to do is we want to change it to overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and double tap E again and see what it does. And that's a very long outro or ending. They won't crossfade or overlap until this is over. First one, three, four, five, six. So I don't know if you paid attention. It gave me four bars, four measures to go into this is a move. So when it hit one, two, three, four, five, six, we were at the end of the line. This is a really long out ending. So what I want to do is tweak it a little bit. So here at the end is four minutes and 57 seconds. We still have a few more seconds to go. So when we end it, I would say five minutes and five seconds, I'd like to begin the next song. So what I'm going to do then is hit edit, hit the three dots, go to end point, be five minutes and five seconds. Update. So now that we do this, Now, it did stop pretty harsh. So what you can do if you'd like is hit edit, go back through the three dots and give it a five second fade out. If you do that, I would give it five more seconds to end because the fade out will stop it sooner. Three, four, five, 
And that's a lot smoother transition now. So again, we go to the next song, we can do the exact same thing. Again, my favorite is overlap because it allows me to still get that full sound from the tracks and not go completely empty and stop to begin the next one. We had a leaders meeting last night and we were able to run playback. One thing that I did is I had Living Hope and at the very end of Living Hope, instead of ending, I went ahead and started What a Beautiful Name on the bridge. So I cut everything out from the beginning of What a Beautiful Name and just began the bridge. So it took a little bit of work, but I was able to get it right in time. So again, this song is 72 beats per minute. What a Beautiful Name is 68 beats per minute. So all I had to do for What a Beautiful Name was tap on the three dots, change it to 72, just like Living Hope and it transitioned seamlessly, which was really awesome. Another thing that you want to look at is this button here. This button is gonna give you a fade out. So let's say you're playing, all of a sudden you guys are off the track. You went to the bridge when you were supposed to go in chorus, completely different chord progressions. Now it's really messed up. I'm gonna hit play. So we're in chorus, we were supposed to do bridge, reverse, whatever it is. All you have to do is and bring it back up. So you literally never skip the beat. And it's not noticeable from the congregation. It's not noticeable from the audience, which makes it really awesome. Another thing he can do too is if you were in verse and you were supposed to be in chorus, all he has to do is staying in on the click Let's go ahead and hit chorus. So whenever he's done showing the verse playing, the guide will guide you automatically to start on chorus at the end of that section. So you guys would be able to finish it. Chorus. Right there. What I suggest is for you to play with it as much as you possibly can so that you can get comfortable with doing things in the moment. So what we have is I may be leading the service. However, my MD is talking to the band at the same time, and that is very helpful. I will be creating another video to demonstrate how to map everything you see on playback onto your MIDI controller. So I look forward to that. If you liked this video, if it was helpful to you, please make sure to like and subscribe. I will be coming up with new content. So thank you very much and we will see you soon.